Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors, another episode of Just In Time. I'm going to read you two scriptures out of the book of Daniel. The first scripture I'm going to read is in chapter 2 and verse 23. It says, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hast given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou hast now made known to us the king's matter. Right there, Daniel is praying. He's talking to God, and he's said, God of my fathers. Daniel knew who God was, had a long history of God, was raised around God. He knew about God. But I want to skip over now, and I want to read the same book, Daniel, chapter 6, and verse 22. He said, My God hath sent his angel, and hath shut the lion's mouth, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. I read two scriptures for the same book. Early in the chapter in the book of Daniel, you read, he talks about the God of my fathers. Daniel knew who God was. He knew about God. He knew everything that God could do for him. He trusted God. He had a, a relationship with God. He prayed to God. He talked to God. Somewhere in the next four chapters, Daniel had some experiences. Daniel encountered a king that wanted to kill him. Actually, the king technically didn't want to kill him. The king's hand was kind of forced, and you read the book, you study, you know there was other people that was behind that king trying to get rid of Daniel. And they basically tricked the king into to killing Daniel. But nevertheless, there had been an attempt made on Daniel's life. He had faced some hardship. Daniel had been put in a lion's den and people were trying to shut Daniel up. People were trying to stop Daniel from praying. But after God showed up to Daniel, Daniel had an experience for himself. He no longer referred to the God of his fathers. Daniel said, my God. Because you see, there's something that changes in a person when you've had an experience with God. And I don't mean just a feeling or an encounter. or. But when your back's been against the wall and they wouldn't know where else to turn. And God showed up on your behalf and touched you and left you where there wasn't a shadow of a doubt that there was a God, that God really is real. Something changes in your viewpoint of God. It becomes a real personal experience then. There's a lot of people that know a lot about God. They have read God's Word. They've studied it. They know all about theology. They know what these scriptures mean, and this is what this scripture is talking about, and this is all laid out like this, and 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 the, this refers to this, and this is how you need to live your life, and this is the plan of salvation, and this is the steps you got to take to be saved, and all of this stuff they know about God. They know he lived. Jesus walked among us and was hung on a cross and in a tomb for three days and he rose again. And they know that he taught on the mountains and they know all the sermons he taught. They can quote all the scriptures. But they really hadn't had the experience that they need to change their viewpoint. You see, you can study God. You can know all the scripture. 
You can know everything about it. You can teach it. You can practice it. You can follow the guidelines that's in here, the do's and the don'ts and the Ten Commandments and everything through Corinthians, all of Paul's writings, and you can have it all to a T. But if you had never got to a place in your life that you needed God and he showed up and you realized, you know what? God knows my name. God knows who I am. God come to where I'm at. And he performed the miraculous for you. It's all different after that. You see, I don't need a set of rules to tell me how to live. I don't need somebody begging me to get over a minor problem in my life. I don't need somebody coaching me along and... Telling me, you know, you got to do this and you don't have to do that. You know, you keep your head up. You can make it. And I'm petting on me all the time. Uh-uh. I, I don't require all that anymore. Because, see, I had an experience a long time ago that he's my God. You see, I was born and raised around this. I knew all these scriptures. I could quote Acts 2.38 and John 3.16 and all these scriptures. I knew here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. I knew all about the, the Ten Commandments. I could quote them all. I knew what it took to live right. But until I became an alcoholic and I made a mess of my life, and I sat there trying to put the pieces back together myself, and I couldn't, I kept failing at trying to quit drinking, I kept failing at trying to live right, and I got to a place that I thought, you know, where can I even be saved anymore? Maybe God don't even talk to me because I sat in some church services and I didn't feel what I felt as a young man or a kid anymore. I didn't feel that Holy Ghost that pulls at your heart. And I prayed, God, is it too late for me? I've made a mess out of life and I can't fix it. God reached down inside of me and he changed some things. He took that desire for alcohol. He changed my outlook on life. He poured a spirit into me. I had an experience one night that you just can't describe. And I knew then he was my God. And now I don't need somebody begging me to live right. Telling me, well, this is wrong, you know, well... Well, what about this? You know, do you need to do this or don't do that? I, I, you know, praying's not something I struggle with. He's my God. He's my friend. I understand now. You see, they ain't nothing in this world that could be offered to me to make me sacrifice the relationship that I've got with Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's times that I get weak. There's times that I don't pray like I should. There's times that I drift away and get caught up in life and get busy and things is going on. I realize, you know, I hadn't prayed as much. But there's never a day that goes by that at some point through the day I don't go, God, I thank you for the day. Even if it's while I'm in the middle of doing what I'm doing, I'm saying, God, I'm thankful for what you've given me today. Thankful for the sunshine or I'm thankful for the rain. And I look at whatever God has given me that day and I'm thankful for it. Some days are better than others. Sometimes I'm struggling. Sometimes I'm on the mountaintop. Sometimes I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. Sometimes it looks like I got money running out my ears. Sometimes everything feels good. Sometimes the stress and the anxiety is so tense that I don't know which way to turn. But there's never a day that I think, you know what, I'm not going to make it through this day. Because he's my God. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. You see, he's got to become your God. 
It can't just be a set of rules that you live by. It can't just be, you know, well, I quoted this prayer this preacher told me to quote. You know, I've accepted Jesus or I, I, I've, you know, I've, I've been baptized or whatever you think is just the plan of salvation. That, that, that's not the, the big deal here, you guys. It's important. That first step is a doozy. It's important. It really is. I'm not making light of, of anybody's idea of being saved. But there's more to it than that. You see, God is in heaven looking down on people. that have got to realize that he knows you. He knows what you're going through. He wants to help you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to save you. But he can't do anything if you don't allow him to. When you look up from your miserable place that you're in, and you forget about my religion or my doctrine or my theology and you throw all that to the side and you sit down and say God I need you and I need you to lead me I need you to guide me and God I need an experience with you that changes my perception pray I need the experience of Daniel in the lion's den oh no None of us want to be attacked by lions. None of us want to be eat up. That ain't the part I'm talking about. But Daniel had a revelation down there that you know what? God's on my side. God's real. God's fighting for me. You see, Daniel did have a prayer life. Daniel had all of that. But when he stood in the middle of his enemies and those lions were there and God shut their mouths and the un impossible happened for him, Daniel had a new new outlook. Daniel had a new experience, a, a new perception of this relationship that he was in. God wasn't no bigger before or after, but Daniel's viewpoint was different. You see, God ain't going to change. God's as real right now as he will be tomorrow for you. But your perception of him has got to change. He's got to become your God through an experience that happens to you where your life is changed. I hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm saved, and I don't see a lot of change in their life. I don't see where they have changed their attitude much or their way of doing things a whole lot. Or their... When God made a change in my life, my whole world changed. What I did and what I did then, I quit doing a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I didn't even have affection for things anymore that I used to have. And I started falling in love with things that I had never really cared a whole lot about before. Because he had become my God. I realized that the one that spoke this world into existence, the one that said, let there be light and darkness fled away, the one that created man from the dust of the ground and breathed that breath of life. That he took time out of his day to reach down to where I was and touch my life. That he wanted me. That he chose me to save me. And y'all, I ain't got all of life figured out. I, I hadn't got everything down to a T yet. I'm still learning. I'm still learning as I go. I still make some mistakes. I still get busy sometimes and let myself get ahead of God. Not intentionally, but it just happens. But there's never a time that goes by that I don't think, well, you know, God don't love me or, well, like God just ain't going to help me never crosses my mind. Sometimes God backs off and lets me fight some things on my own because sometimes I 
chewed off maybe more than I could, bit off more than I could chew. Open my mouth maybe when I should have. Sometimes God lets me learn some lessons. But God had never left me. And God had never not helped me. There ain't never been a bill that I couldn't pay some way or another. There ain't never been a problem that God didn't help me figure out if I asked him to. But the biggest thing is I had always had hope, always have hope, because he's my God. See, it's personal. The relationship is a little stronger. I know I need him. I know I can't figure it out on my own. He's my God because he's done proved himself to me. You got to let him prove himself to you. The only way that happens is when you admit that you can't and you need him. God, I can't do it on my own. I'm not able. I'm just not able. But through Christ who strengtheneth me, all things are possible. Y'all, I come to you today just to tell you he's got to become your God. He can't just be a God you believe in. He can't just be the God of this Bible or the God of your family or your church or your belief or your denomination or your religion. A lot of people say, well, I accepted him as my personal savior. You need to accept him as your personal guide, as your personal relationship, as your best friend, as what you depend on every day. I get up with him. I go to bed with him. I talk to him every day. May not be on my knees in an all-out prayer meeting, but along my day, I look around. I go, God, I am thank you for everything you've done for me. God, I need you to help me today. I need you to give me strength today. I need you to guide me today. I need you to protect me today. I need you to bless me today. And most of all, I say, Lord, I love you today. I love you today. I don't know where I'd be without you, God. If you hadn't stepped in one night, I don't know where I'd be today. Because, y'all, I get frustrated with life sometimes. Everything's not perfect. Everything's not as it always you had hoped for it to be. I have a good life. I have a really good life. But y'all, even it comes with its stresses, its pressure. When nothing seems to be going right. And I'm trying to do more than I can get done. And I get frustrated. I get aggravated. Sometimes it's time to just sit down and say, you know what? You're still my God. Pray that prayer. Say, Lord, I need you to be my God today. Let God step into your life and make a difference. Just like he did Daniel. Daniel started out the God of my fathers. But after some experiences and an encounter in a lion's den and God showed up, Daniel said, my God has showed up. When you have that experience, your outlook will change on life. I come here today to tell you every one of you can be delivered. You don't, it don't, it's like I said last week. It don't have to always be like it's always been. Your life can change. God can change you. But you've got to let him. You've got to stop saying it can't. I can't. I can't do that. I can't live right. I can't live for God. I can't. God don't do. The same God that changed my life. I was as big a sinner as anybody ever was. I'd done a lot of awful things. God changed my life. But you got to make up your mind that you can find your way to his feet. And you got to humble yourself and tell him you need him and let him work. Let him work in your life. Give him a chance. If you keep cutting him off, he's never going to work. But if you'll let him, you'll get to that place that, God, I want to change. Now, you can't. God's not going to change you when you'd rather be drinking beer and doing drugs than living right. You got to be wanting to live right. 
read in a scripture where it said, save yourselves from this untoward generation. See, God paid the price for you back at Calvary. And he'll come down and fill you with his spirit. But you got to make the steps to him. You got to repent. You got to want to change. You got to tell God you need him. I hope I was able to help somebody today to inspire you. Help you push forward. I thank all of you for watching. I pray that you'll make it, that I'll see you on the other side. I pray that you're getting closer to God every day. We ain't none of us ever going to be perfect, but we've got to try to be as good as we can get. Do the best we can. If you do a little better today than you did yesterday, tomorrow will be a better day. I love all of you. God bless you all. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.